Hi everyone, it's Macy, oh. and this is my review of the fourth book in the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Myers. <music> to anyone who hasn't seen my other reviews on Twilight, New Moon, and Eclipse, I'll give some personal context. A few weeks ago, I finally watched all of the Twilight movies and started reading the books. It took until I was 20 to finally do this. Because growing up, I claimed to hate Twilight even though I knew almost nothing about it. I blamed the media and how it was advertised. Also the fact that society hates on anything advertised towards teenage girls. My reviews for Twilight New Moon and Eclipse are already up on my channel and they will be linked down below if you want to go check those out. So now, with all that being said, this is my review of Breaking Dawn. There will be a lot of spoilers ahead if you have not read this book already. God, I don't even know where to start with this one. Not only is the book itself all over the place with characters and plot, but my thoughts are everywhere. I apologize in advance that this is all over the place, but it was hard for me to gather my thoughts on this one. Also, before we get started, I am wearing my Macy is Team Carlisle Cullen's shirt that my friend made for me. We all watched the movies together originally, so she just made- she made custom shirts for all of us. <laughs> that all say our name with Team Carlisle Cullen on them, because we just love Carlisle that much. One of my favorite relationships in this series has always been Charlie and Alice. I was really disappointed with the lack of Alice in this book, but they had to make room for all of the other characters, so it makes sense. As much as I can get attached to fictional characters, I also get weirdly attached to fictional objects as well. So I was kind of sad when it was revealed that Bella didn't have her truck anymore. Jasper is one of my favorite characters. At multiple points, I just wrote, I love Jasper in my notes. <laughs> Like, I thought it was so cute that Jasper unintentionally gravitates towards Bella because she just radiates love and happiness. So, the wedding. It made me cry. I'm a sucker for weddings, but who isn't? I'll talk about the wedding more when we start talking about the movie, so we'll get there, don't worry about it. Something I will say though is that we were absolutely cheated with the reception scene. We could have seen Edward take her garter off with his teeth. Are you kidding me? They left that out? I am glad that Jacob decided to finally return. I just want Bella's happiness as much as Edward at this point. Bella and Jake were actually having a good moment for once. She was so happy to see him and he wasn't being difficult for once. But of course, Jake just had to ruin it. Okay, at this point, we are fully aware that Bella and Edward being intimate while she is still human is very dangerous. Like, that's been shoved down our throats since book one. But Jake just needed to calm down. He had no right getting that mad. Like, he made her cry on her wedding day. So the final goodbye with her parents made me just sob my eyes out. Especially the goodbye to Charlie. I wasn't gonna say much about this, but we got so cheated with the first night of the honeymoon. I was thrown off because I thought it'd be a lot more scandalous than it was. Edward is the biggest drama queen. He's so upset about hurting Bella and Bella's just over here like, I don't care, like, it doesn't really matter to me. And he's just like, no, I'm hurting you. I can't touch you. Like... However, once Edward was comfortable that he wouldn't hurt Bella and he could control himself, their interactions were so cute, I was living for it. It was so wild to me that Bella wanted to keep the baby so bad. I was more on Edward's side, considering it would and did kill her in the end. So at this point in the book, we switched to Jacob's point of view. As much as I don't like Jacob, I'm kind of glad that we had his point of view in a way. Not only was it an outside view of the situation, but it was just a really nice change. It made it a little less repetitive and added more action and conflict with the pack. Another character I love so much is Seth. I'm so happy he went with Jake and stuck with what he thought was right. Something else I noticed about Jake's point of view is that he's a lot more bearable and a little less annoying, but that's just because we're in his head. A character I was really surprised to come to like was Leah. I felt so bad for her. Like, I never really gave her a lot of thought until now. She is literally stuck in a pack and mentally linked to her ex and so she can hear all of his thoughts. And not only is it bad enough that he's an ex, but she's still in love with him. But he just wishes that she could just go away. That sounds like hell on earth. I don't blame her for leaving at the first chance that she got. That's what I would have done if I were her. Also, the boys hated being around her because she was so negative. But she's constantly hurting, so I don't blame her, and they should have given her a little more slack. 
I really liked it when Edward and Jacob actually got along at points, even if it was over their mutual dislike for Rosalie. Also, are we just gonna ignore the fact that at this point Edward was so desperate that he wanted Jacob to have children with Bella? if that would persuade her to get rid of this other child that they're having. I will say though, at one point during Jake's point of view, I really did miss Bella. I'm so glad Jake finally understood how Leah felt. Like it says here on page 245, I would never blame her again. How could anyone help spreading this kind of misery around? How could anyone not try to erase some of the burden by shoving a little piece of it on someone else? It just made me happy that one of the boys finally understood her. Honestly, probably my favorite part in this entire book was when Rosalie gives Jacob food in a dog bowl. And he actually ate out of it. And then he proceeded to chuck the dog bowl at the back of Rosalie's head. Comedy gold. The labor scene was so intense. But I will say that the detail that the book went into with the changing process was really fascinating to me. All right, I'm just gonna state the obvious. Jacob imprinting on a literal newborn is so weird. But in a way, I was glad because he didn't have to suffer anymore. But still, oh my god, a newborn? Like, are you kidding me? Bella and Edward being the same temperature made me weirdly emotional. It's just so strange that he's not ice cold to her anymore. When that was such a prominent description that she would use for him. Another one of my favorite parts was Bella attacking Jacob for imprinting on Renesme. He's just been such an ass this entire series. So it was about time that she lashed out and the moments that Bella got to spend with Renesmee were so precious. It was one of the cutest things, I have to admit. So when Bella and Edward got their house, the first thing I wrote in my notes was COTTAGECORE in all capital letters. I would give anything to live in that house though. I would really missed just Bella and Edward alone together. It was really nice just to see them alone together in a romantic light. I really miss the romance. So Jake telling Charlie about himself was probably one of the stupidest things that he's ever done. He really doesn't think before he acts, but we already knew that. I will say though, I was really happy to see Charlie again. I really missed him. Seeing Bella finally love herself was so refreshing. Just seeing her be truly happy and loving her new life as a vampire was so nice. I've really just come to love her character so much over the course of the series. I like how they only played baseball once, but all the big battles always happen in the baseball field. So right before they thought they were gonna fight, on page 724, all the pain and the love from the characters really just made me tear up. I kind of wish that there was a battle though at the end, it would have made it a lot more exciting in my opinion. But the topper on everything was the fact that at the very end, Edward finally got to read Bella's mind. She was able to lift her shield and he could see everything through her eyes and it was so cute. It made me cry. <laughs> so I guess my biggest complaint with this book is that there wasn't enough romance for my liking. Like Bella and Edward could finally be 100% with each other, but there was barely anything other than the wedding and the honeymoon and then all that like that time they spent at their house and that was about it. So after reading the book, I watched both of the movies back to back. I wanted to compare and give my thoughts on the movies too. So the first thing I noticed is that Jacob takes his shirt off 10 seconds into the movie. It made me laugh. The dialogue in part one is hysterical, especially at the reception. This is controversial, I know, but I liked the wedding in the movie more than the book. Turning Pages is my favorite song out of any of the songs on any of the soundtracks. Whenever it would play, I'd just write Turning Pages in all capital letters in my notes. The wedding scene was just so perfect. It was so visually stunning. But aside from the beautiful setting and the beautiful dress and just how stunning everything was, it was the music that really made it special. The Turning Pages instrumental as she's walking down the aisle and then fading into Flightless Bird as they said their vows made me so emotional. The callback to their first dance under the pavilion at prom in Twilight was just perfect. I just wrote, Flitless Bird, I'm Sobbing in all capital letters. The movie Honeymoon made up for the letdown that was the honeymoon in the books. The fact that he broke the bed was so funny. So fast forward to the labor scenes. From the moment the blood cup fell to the changing was just really gross. To quote my notes, God the CGI baby is so ugly. The montage of Bella's life leading up to her opening her eyes just gave me chills. So the first time I watched Breaking Dawn, I had not read the books or seen any of the other movies. So I was very confused, I will say that. 
But like I said before, I watched it with a group of people that kind of filled me in along the way, so I wasn't so lost. The battle was a lot more entertaining when I was actually emotionally attached to the characters, even though I already knew it was a vision. They killed off all my favorites though. We got Carlisle, we got Jasper, we got Seth, and we got Leah. They were all gone. <laughs> even though I knew it was fake, I was so upset. I especially liked that Alice and Sam brought down Jane, even though it didn't actually happen. So the montage of memories and moments between Bella and Edward really just made me tear up. But the end credits where they show all of the characters throughout the entire series really just hit me hard. Like I was sobbing, like full on crying sobbing. Here's a video I took after watching it. <sighs> Holy shit. <laughs> I did not need to go that hard for the montage at the end. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it was a mess. So overall, I think the movies did a really good job at summarizing an over 700 page book. The two parts of this book were so drastically different. I'm actually glad they split it into two movies. Like the two movies actually made sense in this case. So like I said before, I didn't mind Jake's point of view, but I will say it really took away from the main point of the series, and that is Bella and the choices that she makes. This book is really just Bella finally getting what she wants. Something that was really confusing though was there was so much world building, literally just out of nowhere. And it was all crammed into the last few chapters of this book. It also introduced so many new characters at the last minute. And on top of that, it was all at once too. It was really hard to keep up with. I will say this book was really weird, but I really did enjoy seeing Bella's story finally come to a close. I'm a sucker for a happy ending. So there you have it, that is my review of Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Myers. If you like this video, then please leave a like. And if you want to see more of my face in the future, then please feel free to subscribe down below. All of my social media will also be linked down below, as well as all of the reviews for the rest of the books in this series. Like I said, I already have my Twilight, New Moon, and Eclipse reviews, and they will all be linked down below. I can't believe I finally read all of the Twilight books. It was well worth it, and I'm so happy I did. Thank you so much again for watching this video. Bye!